Did you know that some early civilizations didn't use symbols to show numbers? Their only way to show numbers was by using fingers or hand gestures. And the Incas of South America showed numbers using knots in string. And while fingers and knots are discrete countable objects, they're rarely used in classrooms today. So in this episode, I'm going to show you the three models that are, or at least should be used, to teach number in elementary schools today. And they are the discrete countable objects, the length model, and the number line model. Even before children come to school, they can generally show you numbers using their fingers. Ask any young child how old they are and they'll show you, I am three. Some of the first learning experiences for number involve discrete countable objects that the children can touch and move. And these initial experiences should involve everyday materials such as counters or lids or even toys but eventually they'll need more formal classroom resources like counters uh, of various kinds or even cubes. Countable objects such as these give students a good mental picture of quantity and help them understand that numbers can actually be manipulated. And when they're paired with resources such as a five frame or a 10 frame, they are ideal for teaching a base 10 number system and basic number facts. For example, in episode two, I showed you how you can use a double tens frame to help the children add numbers. When they see nine and five, they can manipulate the numbers to think nine and five is the same as 10 and four. But students can also manipulate numbers without using five and tens frames. Here I see six and four, and a child might know it's six because they can count six but given the right experiences, they should also know at six because they recognize the domino pattern for six. And the same is true for four. So if they don't know what six and four is, they may think it's easier to add double five. Now you don't get to think of it that way when you're dealing with symbols alone. It only comes from manipulating concrete, discrete objects. Now the second representation for teaching number is the length model. And early experiences for children involve the number track, which can be built using hands-on resources such as cubes. In episode 13, I showed you a, a sequence of development that began with cubes before moving to hands-on pictorial resources involving a measuring tape before culminating in a hundreds board, which is essentially a reorganized number track. After reading the story, you can have your students make their own hands-on or concrete number track using connecting cubes. Afterwards, you can have your students make their own pictorial number track that goes beyond 10 and work with your students to cut it into strips like this. They are strips of 10, therefore they are decades. And when you rearrange it like this, you can see what's happening. We are making a hundreds board right before their eyes. While the attribute is length, there are still discrete, countable objects, which makes it a perfect prerequisite to the third model for teaching number, which is the number line. In fact, you wouldn't be mistaken for thinking this is a hybrid model that sits somewhere between the two other models, the discrete countable one and the number line model. But the other length model that's been getting a lot of attention lately is the bar or strip model. And this is no hybrid model. There are no discrete countable parts. They're simply long diagrams that represent certain known or unknown values. Now students are often asked to draw these to help them solve problems involving one of the four operations. For example, suppose Gemma has 12 apples and Jai has eight apples. How many more apples does Gemma have than Jai? A student may draw something like this to help them figure out that it is a problem involving difference or to show their reasoning as they actually figure out the answer. The third and last model for teaching number is called the number line model. 
In episode three, I told you that a number line model is a special kind of length model because the attribute is distance. Now let's look at how this model differs from a length model such as a number track. Here we have a number track that shows one to five. If I asked the child to find four on the number track, they could count out the pieces from left to right. One, two, three, four, and point to this piece and say it is four. And this is why we do not show zero on number tracks or hundreds boards, because zero is not a counting number. Now here is the number line from zero to five. If I asked the student to find four on the number line, they could start at zero and count the jumps. One, two, three, four, and then point to the location and say it is four because it is four jumps of one from zero. In doing so, they are describing a distance from zero. Now, when it comes to teaching number, your student or child should be exposed to a sequence of development that looks like this. To build on from their experiences with number tracks, they should first experience number lines that are complete. This means all numbers are shown on the line. Next, they would encounter a number line that is only partially numbered. And you can imagine there's many variations of number lines such as this. And finally, they should be able to use numberless or empty number lines. Without going into much detail now, I personally think the number line is the most versatile and therefore most useful model for teaching about numbers, fractions, decimal, place value, operations, rounding numbers, and so much more. But that's a topic for another episode. Now this is what I want you to do. One, remember that there are three models for teaching number in elementary schools, and they are the discrete countable objects, the length model involving number tracks or strips or bars, and the number line. And two, know that mathematics is a hierarchical discipline where what you teach today must build on what happened yesterday and ready students for the content of tomorrow. So think carefully about the sequence of development and the timing for which you introduce each of those models. And finally, if you've seen value in today's episode, then give me a thumbs up and subscribe today so you never miss another learning opportunity with me. See you next time.